Hello traders and welcome back to another ConquerFX YouTube video. I believe good trading is a simple repeatable process and that's exactly what I want to discuss in this video. Before we jump into things I would really really appreciate if you could just get out of this video right now if you're in full screen mode and just press the like button and also subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try and be as consistent with these videos as possible over the next few months and I'm sure we have a lot of content to share with you guys. So liking the video, subscribing to the channel, commenting below um, you know if you have any questions or any you know video ideas or problems you may be having that I can make into a video format and um, you know this all helps the channel and ultimately it's going to help you as well as we'll be getting more content out. So yeah let's just get straight into things okay. So like I was saying, I believe good trading is a simple repeatable process and to start this webinar off, I want to discuss the common questions that I get on a day to day basis. If you don't already follow us, you can follow us on conquer underscore FX on Instagram where you can talk to me on a day to day basis. I usually reply to messages within 24 hours and I usually get the same questions over and over again. Now, sometimes there'll be different variants of those questions. So for example, how to draw a support and resistance level, you know, they'll also ask what's the strongest level, how is do we determine a strong support level over a weak support level, how to place my Fibonacci, do I place it from the wick to wick or close to close, how much should I risk, should I ever fluctuate my risk, when can I increase my risk, decrease my risk, when sh do, should I keep the same risk all of the time. What session should I trade or time of the day should I trade? Which one is better for me? Which one is, will give me more profits? What entry patterns should I use? Is an engulfing better than a pin bar? Is a pin bar better than an engulfing? And so on and so forth. And same with exit rules. You know, simple things like do I enter, exit off the break of a moving average or break a market structure or, or what? Okay, so... You know, they're the same common questions that come up over and over again. And I'm sure they're the same common questions that you have probably asked someone or at least thought at some stage in your trading journey. The fact is that there is no correct way of doing things in the market, which tends to be why a lot of traders become overwhelmed as they need to pick some sort of direction for themselves without them actually knowing if it's the correct direction. But I'm telling you now, there is no right direction to take in this game. It's about proving to yourself, first of all, by looking at the data, if this actual process that you're building is works, and then having the confidence and courage to go and trade that and consistently collect the database on that to prove to yourself, okay, I can make money from this. My job now is to manage risk and execute flawlessly the same process over and over again. But if you look at this from just a day to day life, majority of the time, you know, you've been conditioned that this is the right way to do things. This is the right way to go about life. You know, you go to school and then you go to high school and then you go to college and then you go to a job and then you retire at 60 and you'll get your pension and then you go to an old folks home and then you die you know the next stages of your life supposedly from you know if we just put it from a basic point of view um of how you've been conditioned it's the same way of you know um you know there, there's so much there's so many examples but you know you clean the house this way don't do it that way make your bed this way don't do it that way um you know, get up at this time, go to sleep at that time, you know, you've been told what to do, we've all been conditioned to kind of be like robots in a way, and that's why when you come to trading, it can be a shock to the system to try and understand that there is no correct way of doing things, what do you mean there's no correct way of doing things, well, how are they making money, and why is this trader making money this way, but this trader draws his line this way, and how are they both making money at the same time, but doing things completely different, and this is the beautiful thing about trading that I think, that you can be completely unique in your approach, and as a person, and you can still take profits from the market, as long as you have a simple, repeatable, and consistent process that allows you to take money while also managing risk. And you need to gain, the only way to actually step out of that and, and actually truly understand what I'm saying here is going and taking a basic concept, whatever that may be, and simply just testing it. You know, and I really mean that this could be something as simple as identifying, you know, we talk about price, price positioning, and then time, okay? And this can be as simple as literally identifying a range, 
Okay, so here's a range. Um, and this time here would be New York Open. Identifying your support and resistance levels here and looking for a breakout on either side. Okay, it could just, let's just use this as, a, as an example. You're going to look for a close and a breakout below, and then you're going to look for the nearest area of support or resistance or whatever it may be to look for a sell or buy position. Now, this, <clears throat> it can literally be as simple as this, but as long as the process is consistent, that's all that matters because this could be trader A and then trader B could be the one who's actually buying off the break out of the range and seeing it on a larger time frame as a false breakout to look for a move up higher. And they are using, so the trend could look something like this. And the false breakout could come down here. You are focusing on the sell. They're focusing on the 0.618 Fibonacci level retracement here for move up higher. It doesn't actually matter, but the whole point is trader A has a consistent repeatable process and trader B has a consistent repeatable process that aligns with their beliefs of the market, their personality and the confidence that they've built through their own experience and the data they've collected in the first place. And this is very, very important to understand. Nothing is right in the market until it is proven. Nothing works in the market until it is proven. If I told you now to buy off this support level and resistance level, I am telling you that based off my own experience, my, you know, experiences that I've gone through in the charts from a day-to-day -day basis, and my beliefs about the market and whatever consistent pattern I'm seeing right now that makes me believe we're moving up higher. You could see a short position, but that doesn't mean that you know any less than I do. Okay, yes, experience comes into play here, of course, but it doesn't mean that you know anything less than I do. I may just be more conditioned or whatever, but at the end of the day, we all see the same information on our chart. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. Everything you need right now to become the trader who you desire to be, you have all the information available to you. There is something with the way you manage money, manage risk, and the overall, the way you think that is actually stunning your, stunting your growth. And you need to basically find those triggers and emotional problems and trauma that you have within the market and be able to move them to the side so you can focus on that simple, repeatable, consistent process. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to jump straight into the charts and kind of discuss these questions so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so at the moment we are on pound dollar daily chart and, you know, we basically just have a Fibonacci level placed, okay? And this is going to be the first example that I want to use to prove to you that trading is just about a consistent, repeatable process. Before we jump into this, a consistent, repeatable process doesn't mean that you're just going to draw a line for the same way every single day or whatever it may be, okay? A consistent, repeatable process is after you've collected the data to prove to you that it works. Your job then is to execute flawlessly on that plan. Okay, but make sure that you're executing on that plan exactly like you did before and not making minor tweaks that may actually have a bigger effect on your account and on your trading performance than you might think. And this Fibonacci retracement here is going to actually prove that to you, to you right now. Like I said, the common questions I get on a day-to-day -day basis are how to draw support and resistance, how to draw fib level or whatever else, okay? And let's just start with how to place my Fibonacci retracement. I personally do not really use the Fibonacci retracement. I used to use it in my trading for more kind of swing style in general. <clears throat> and then I kind of grew out of using it, okay? Which, yeah, just, it just happens. It doesn't mean that it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. I personally just don't use it anymore. Okay. There's literally just no other reason for it. Um, you know, and I have to be very careful what I say here because some people will, oh, Conger FX doesn't use this. That means it doesn't work. No. Okay. Just because I don't use something doesn't mean that it doesn't work. You just need to go and test it and find how to make it work for yourself. So the common question with the fib retracement is how should I draw my fib? Now, 
when I see, I've been on webinars with people and, you know, discussing, say, for example, if they're just looking for a simple trend trading system and they're using the Fibonacci retracement as a measurement for those aggressive pullbacks, um, whatever it may be, okay? And I've seen people do this. They'll be drawing their Fibonacci. I'll ask them to make a video and break down their strategy and they'll do this. They'll go, oh, okay, um, here's a Fibonacci retracement. And then, you know, they'll get another Fib and they'll say, here is a Fibonacci retracement here and so on and so forth, okay? Now, you might not have noticed it yet, but what's the difference between this Fibonacci retracement and this Fibonacci retracement? Focusing on the closes here and on the wicks here. Very minute detail, but I'm going to prove to you now why that can have such a big effect, okay? Everything is a simple, repeatable process, but it has to be consistent in your approach on how you do things. Because let's just say you draw from wick to wick. If you draw your Fibonacci retracement from wick to wick, and let's think of a simple, common, generic rule that people will use. I'll enter off this level here or this level here. I'll look for confirmation around here. All good, perfect. <clears throat> you have an engulfing candle here, beautiful entry, whatever it may be, or you know, you're going to enter right up here with a limit order, okay? Whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, look, look at this. You're drawing from wick to wick and you're going to say, oh, my stop loss is going to be at this 100 level here. That's where my stop loss is going to be. If we hit that level, then we're probably wrong. That is a fair enough statement to say. It's a fair enough way of looking at things. It's a fair enough rule. Obviously, if it's been tested as well. So we see the market drop off and you're completely fine here. Very little drawdown, whatever it may be. Now, do this. The next time you come along and you draw from close to close, you enter off the 78.6, and now what do you see? Your stop loss up here gets hit before the market moves away. So now the trader who was keeping their stop loss here that was protected before is can't understand why. Why was there such an aggressive pullback here or why am I wrong this time without realizing that minute change that they made in their plan that has after making a huge, huge difference to their overall performance. Stop loss was up here, you were safe, but then you moved it from close to close without realizing it or you didn't pick the entire high, you picked here and you, you got tapped out and the market <clears throat> excuse me the market takes you out moves away and now you've complete confusion frustration you think the market is out to get you you think the fibonacci retracement isn't this holy grail that you've been searching for and it doesn't have the magic powers that you once believed and the fact is this usually happens when we're getting very bored or we want to trade or we're trying to find a trading opportunity in a very choppy market. Why? Because what you'll see is you'll draw it from here and let's say your entry is a 78.6 and always it has to be the 78.6 retracement and you see this bearish candle here on the daily chart. All of a sudden you say, oh, well, it's a bearish candle, you know, if I put it here, well, then actually technically I have an entry, so I'll just enter. Okay, that's the common mistake that people make without actually writing down in your trading plan, trading plan, okay, how to draw my fib, okay, I'm going to do wick to wick, okay, it doesn't matter what way you do, it doesn't matter if you go close to close, but at least if you're going to close to close, then make sure your stop loss is at a specific level or at a specific high that is, in, you know, where the market is actually safe. Not technically where you need to be accurate. So this is the problem we see with stop loss placements as well. Stop loss placements need to be consistent in their approach as well, because sometimes what you'll do is you'll say, Oh, well, my stop loss here will be okay on the first bearish candle, okay? And you will, you know, use this rule now, but when in your training plan it says that your stop loss should be above the the last high, okay? And 
do your stop loss placement needs to be as repeatable as process as well and you can use tools like this like an ATR um which is average true range um you know one t- one ATR two ATR it all depends on obviously your testing and what measurements and metrics you want to use but your targets and stop loss when they are repeatable it's a lot lot easier Okay, now it, obviously, you know, you can extend your take profit stop loss, but it's a lot, lot easier to optimize a plan in general when your take profit and stop losses are using certain metrics that allow you to you basically calculate a measurement of some sort. Okay, and so what, what, what I mean by this, I'm sorry, I, I realize that's kind of all over the place what I just said there, but what I mean by this is if you have a stop loss here, okay, and let's just say higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs, lower lows, and your stop loss is here, and then the market comes up and taps you out and then moves away, and this was 20 pips, and then the next time you have a trade and you put it as 10 pips, and the market comes up, taps you out, and then you have another trade and, you know, you put your stop loss off here, it was 30 pips, and it doesn't stop you out, and then you do that again, and it doesn't stop you out, but it gives it enough room for the market to breathe okay what you'll start to realize is that 30 pips may be one ATR let's say and as markets become more volatile and um, what you'll notice is markets will tend to change okay your stop losses may become bigger your take profits become bigger and um, but what you'll notice about the ATR value is that you can say right well one ATR obviously isn't enough here. Um, I'm repeatedly getting stopped out. Let's change this to two ATR. And what you can easily see by simply changing the data. So you could have all this data on your chart and say this is one ATR. By checking two ATR, you can immediately check the data and say, oh, well, double that. Um, I can see that my win rate actually, actually increases. I'm giving more time for the market to breed. And now this is a simple, repeatable process that we can continue forward with. Um, now, back to back to the Fibonacci retracement here like I was saying it has to be simple consistent and repeatable over and over again it's the exact same sorry with drawing um, your support and resistance levels we see in a constant basis people arguing how to draw support and resistance levels how to you know how to find the strongest ones and why are we over complicating this process there's really only three three ways in the most simplest form if we just break it down to its simplest forms there's three ways to draw your key levels on your chart okay the first one is being that you look for multiple wicks and you look for the touches of multiple wicks we can say here that here all the wicks here 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 and so on so forth this is you know a good area of support or resistance okay it's hard to argue this otherwise the next trader could do this where they have their line chart and what they're doing is they're focusing on the close um so in this case here yeah so this will be support and then we'll go back to candlesticks and you can see here this too is also a good area of resistance okay or support in this case over here right so both ways are correct both ways spot different levels overall possibly but both ways are correct okay now the next way is to use psychological levels whole numbers quarter levels mid levels whatever whatever it is you know that you trade solely off let's just say here 1.400 and then you know we can go from a midpoint then as well here roughly and then you know here again then okay just it's not accurate but as you can see this is a very you know good way of drawing support and resistance levels as well the whole point i'm trying to make here is that there is no correct way in doing things okay sometimes one way might work better than the rest but i overall the main reason why other traders are successful in the way they draw their levels or look for their points of interest is because they do it the same way over and over again it is a simple repeatable process and this is what you're missing out on 
you know, if you be honest with yourself, the main reason why you believe that support and resistance or key levels didn't work or why you believe that there is a correct way of doing it that you're missing is probably because you were looking for complete accuracy. And, you know, if you actually think about this, it makes sense because if I do this, if I draw from, let's just say, multiple closures, so let's just go from the line chart here. Um, I'm looking for an area that has, you know, a lot of closures. Yeah, so around here probably would make some sense. Okay, let's just, so we can get through this. But as you can see here, to you, this looks choppy. To me, this just looks like I need to wait for confirmation. Because what you want is this. You want this. That's what you want. Now, that is very hard to do on a consistent, repeatable basis okay it is extremely hard to do and you want this up here and this up here and this top and this top and this bottom and that's how accurate you want to be calling your trades when realistically that's it just it's not going to happen over and over again and you are giving yourself constant consistent headaches why would you want to do this to yourself i would much rather wait for the strong confirmation around this level and have a stop loss where it is more in a safe place rather than a tight stop loss where I need to prove to everyone um, and get validation for everyone of how great of a trader I am because of a 100 hour trade when that just makes no sense because you're not going to be doing that every single day. Okay, what trader do you want to be? Do you want to be the trader that makes a consistent, repeatable, consistent income um, on a month-to-month, -month, week to week basis, or do you want to be the trader that calls that one trade on that year, you know, the whole year that made 100 hour on one trade? Yes, okay, it might, you know, you you might make a serious amount of money there, um, but it just it just doesn't make sense. You're putting yourself under extreme stress levels here. You're knocking yourself out. You are actually the reason why you're knocking yourself out of this flow state to be able to trade properly in the first place, to be able to trade in a flow state that allows you to think clearly and execute flawlessly. So when we look at drawing these support and resistance levels, pick one way of doing it, repeatedly do that level and you'll start to spot things of how you do it. Because if you are constantly changing, if I am drawing it from, let's say the closures one week and then I'm drawing it from the top of the wicks next week, it, it, it doesn't make sense because now my the way I'm doing things is not consistent, meaning the data I'm collecting is now manipulated, meaning that when I go to spot problems, it's going to be much more harder to spot them in the first place or identify problems because everything is different. Everything isn't the same. But when everything is the same, it's a lot easy to say, this clearly doesn't work. We need to change this up instead of going, oh, well, I drew this from the close. I drew this from the wick. Now I need to separate them and I need to see which one works better or which one's more accurate in terms of spotting levels or helping me get a confirmation, etc. Because at the end of the day, both have their own um, pros and cons as well. If you're drawing from the close here, well, then you can focus on a close. If you draw from the close of the candles, let's say, you can say, well, if the market closes above this level, we may look for a retest and a continuation to go up higher if there's a range for the market to travel up. So for example, you know, here would be a good example. Here's the close. Um, we respect it here again. But if we close above here, you know, if you look to the left hand side, you know, it wouldn't be really till here till the, the market could possibly travel all the way to here. Um, and, you know, with the wicks, then it's a little bit different. You could say, right, well, as long as we don't come above this level here, we're fine. OK, it all depends on your trading style and the way you want to do things. Um, but as long as you're doing the same thing over and over again, then everything becomes a lot, lot easier. So. Make sure to keep things simple. Make sure to use the information in front of you the best you can. It's the same with what, like what sessions should I trade, okay? Um, you know, if we just look at, let's, let's just move down here for a second. Let me put some things on the chart here for a moment. <clears throat> you know, it's the exact same when it comes down to what session is the best time to trade or what session will give me the best opportunities. Um, well, think of this logically, 
Okay, think of it logically. In order to make better trades, you know, you need, let's say, more information. When are you going to get more information as a day trader? You're going to get more information probably later in the day coming into that New York Open. Because now you've had Asian Open, you've London Open, and you've more information to look at where the price is currently positioned coming into that open what happened at london open and what direction did it follow and the same with the asian range did london follow asia etc etc okay and this allows us to create more of an accurate bias but that doesn't mean that the new york session is going to be best for you because it might not suit your lifestyle um you know the 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 pattern that you're specifically trading might just be down to the the london um open itself or whatever it may be but as long as you are consistently trading that one time frame um, you are going to see results a lot lot quickly a lot lot more quickly than the individual that's trying to trade every single move on the chart because remember movement does not mean opportunity when you have a playbook all you're looking is for that playbook setup and everything becomes a lot easier to spot and identify opportunities on a day-to-day -day basis because you're no longer looking for moves you're looking for setups and this is what's very very important there is a huge huge difference here you're not looking for movement you're looking for setups and when we are able to identify setups at a particular time on a particular instrument and you do that for six months to a year you are going to see results a lot more quickly than the individual that's trying to trade all of this movement in the market every single instrument at every single time because you have dialed in on one specific area specialized specializing in one specific Pacific instrument, one Pacific time, and one Pacific playbook setup. You are going to be miles ahead of the person who's trying to trade everything. And this is also, I believe, down to this Instagram culture that everyone is showing that they're placing 20 trades a day and that they were able to call every single price fluctuation, which I guarantee you they are not because they are some sort of god if they are actually doing this on a day to day basis and they are probably one of the most richest people alive um but you need to you need to understand that you don't need to be you don't need to be at the charts every single you know minute of the day and you don't need to be able to call every single movement your movement to make a consistent income could be that engulfing candle that is it. That's all you need. Okay? It literally could be that engulfing candle. It could be this wick fill here done for the day finished you're out and don't let anyone tell you anything different because 95 percent of people can't make money and if we're looking on instagram what are 95 percent of people doing they're saying that they're trading loads they're doing this and that and they're all suddenly becoming experts which make absolutely no sense because they're not enough room for that much success in this game statistically um so 90 percent of those people you see on instagram are consistently losing traders um and you that's why you need to look at what the majority is doing and do the opposite of that what is the opposite a simple repeatable process being good at being boring convincing yourself that you're not smarter than the system that you have created all you have to do is execute flawlessly on that plan while also managing risk and make sure that you're coming to the desk clear-headed, well-charged and ready for that particular training session, training day, whatever it may be. That's what your job is. And if you struggle with that, you need to think about the weighted coin analogy where basically I have a coin on my desk. And if you've been to any of my live Instagram sessions, what you'll see is the coin is always sitting on my desk and I've had it from very early stages of when I started trading and it basically is a reminder for me to always flawlessly execute my plan so and if I'm feeling tired and I'm you know find that maybe I'm second guessing a trade it's just a constant reminder to flawlessly execute if the plan is met execute let your edge do the work why are you working do let the edge do the hard work for you and it's all down to imagine if you had a weighted coin and on the weighted coin one the weighted side was on heads and every time you flip that coin you had a probability of 70 percent of getting heads now if i told you i'd give you 10 euro for every time you would get heads and you would give me you know five euro for every time you you know get tails would you hesitate to flip that coin 
realistically you probably won't because you know that your edge is going to play out if you keep flipping that coin you are going to make money out of 100 flips let's say 50 flips but the other side of it is you know that every time you flip that coin it's completely random if you're going to if it's going to be a win or a loss all you know is that if you do it 100 times there's going to be a 70 percent probability that you are going to um you know, come out with money at the end of the day, okay? Because there's a 70% probability that you are going to get heads, all right? So this is the way to look at trading. Look at it as in, what's your edge? What is your win rate from your back testing, whatever it may be? Let's just say it's 60%. And if you have a risk reward, say of, you know, you, you risk one to get three, well then, why are you hesitating to flip the coin? All you need to do is execute flawlessly on that plan. But that all comes back down to confidence. And it comes down to if your process is not simply, you know, a simple repeatable process, you're probably finding that there is a lot of friction in your trading, a lot of friction in the decision making process. Your checklist is too big, too many things need to line together in order to actually execute the trade. When the trader over here who's saying, I have a range, if we break below, uh, above or below during New York Open, when there's high volume coming into play, I will execute a trade. Compared to the person who says, okay, we have liquidity grab here, change in structure here, oh, we've gaps here, um, you know, buy side, liquidity, whatever, whatever it is th that you're drawing in your chart, all of this nonsense, when you could just completely just keep things simple arrive to the desk at a certain time execute walk away i'm done for the day and it can literally be as simple as that but there's the other side of things when it comes to mental trade the mental trading side of things that when you look at trading you need to it's it's such a high performance field because especially if you're a day trader you need to make sure when you come to that desk that you are in your right mind that you are focused and you're ready for the trading day that is hard to do if you're consistently trading a complicated trading plan or a complicating trading method that means that you constantly need to be on your best behavior your best form and high fo basically be extremely highly focused all the time and clued in but if we reduce all that friction, um, now we have at least the least amount of obstacles in our way where we can just come. We have, you know, those five to six rules that are very simple but extremely detailed. And now we just need to execute. Okay, we've this, this, and that. Time to execute. We can press the button. Um, and, you know, that makes a huge difference to the trader as well. That can come, if you have a simple, repeatable process, you're more likely to be able to come and execute more flawlessly than the trader who has a more complicated process. And this is what I'm trying to say to you. It also comes down then as well to what entry patterns should I use? What exit rules should I use? it's it's very very simple and let me just change back to this chart you know if you just zoom out for a second and we keep our trading as simple as possible like i want to do on a day-to-day -day basis anyway why are we over complicating everything the same things happen over and over again at areas where we have rejections or reversals or some sort of a correction and it's either the three main patterns that you see, and if you really just want to simplify it to this, because this is what I've simplified my trading to, is large aggressive wicks that are probably bigger than the body of the candle, pin bars, and engulfing bars. It is literally as simple as that. And I don't hold weight on those patterns. So when I see this specific pattern here, uh, say this is engulfing this bar or this is a pin bar here and this is engulfing that bar I don't care about this if it's not within my specific time range if it's not in my specific point of interest um, or where price is positioned the bars that I care about have to be at a specific time at a specific price at a specific price positioning um, at that time of day otherwise it doesn't it doesn't matter to me and this is where the filtering method comes into play that it doesn't matter what entry pattern you have as long as the data you've collected and the time or the method you're using shows that this is a consistent repeatable entry pattern for you to execute on giving you that signal of hey this is about to move let's go and the best way to actually pick an entry pattern is one that shows you that there's volume coming into play 
why would you want to trade this nonsense or even try and navigate your way around this nonsense here? It doesn't make sense. The market isn't giving you enough information here to execute compared to candles like this, compared to wicks like this or wicks like this. It doesn't, this right here, Okay, these wicks, these type of candles make much more sense and provide the trader with a lot more information than any of this bullshit here on the screen or like this. Then to get off the screen, I'm done for the day. And that's all you need to do. Stop trying to overcomplicate the process. It's the same with this here. Large wick to the bottom, engulfing candle, pin bar. What do you think this is giving us? It's giving, showing us that there's volume probably going to come into play here. And even better than what do we see here? You say, okay, well, we have this consolidation period. Yes, but just take a step back and look at what the candlesticks are telling you. Which way are the wicks facing? The wicks are bigger than the candle body themselves and they're facing to the downside. That means the market pushed up and pulled back, showing us that buyers are still in control. There is no need to worry about this here. It is nothing but a small accumulation phase within this kind of smaller range here. We have a fake out as well. There's so many, confirma so many confirmations for us to look for a, a a potential buy here then we have say this resistance here which is the top of this consolidation area here so we see the market start coming down well where is it more likely to reject well we have a consolidation area here this is where it's going to cause friction the market's coming down okay now we have a big engulfing candle okay realistically if we have a lot of space like this majority of the time the candle will come and basically you know, correct this movement before moving off. It won't happen all the time, like you've seen here. Sometimes it will run, but majority of the time it will correct itself in some shape or form. And as we can see, market comes down, then provides you with another entry here, another entry here. Where is our next possible boundary? Well, we have wicks up here and the market can move up here. See how simple I'm keeping the process over and over again. Like ask yourself even here then, why, you know, the market played around here. We obviously have a strong area of support here you know we have strong area resistance here we came above and closed above now why did we travel all the way here let's look to the left hand side oh we have a period of consolidation here and this is this is not the way i trade but what i'm trying to show you is that it is a very simple repeatable process and when we combine points of interest with points uh, with pacific price positioning and the time of the day everything becomes a lot more simpler and then when we see okay well this makes sense that we're rejecting this area we have this engulfing candle I can sell whereas my next price you know area where the market could possibly reject well here it is here so we just need to take a step back and the problem is that you can't spot any of this information or read the information in front of you if you find this information threatening in the first place so you need to basically fix your trauma with the market understand that this price this information in front of you is not threatening reduce your risk to a point where not the, not enough where you don't care about losing and also not enough where you care you you know you are too happy with how much you win either and um, there's a medium there where you want to find what type of risk can you use where, oh, it's it's just a win, it's just a loss. That is the perfect type of mindset to be in right now, especially as a beginner, because it just allows you to focus on trading well. Then as you're trading well, you're building those good habits, you can start increasing that risk over time. But why don't people do that? People don't do that because they want to, they want the results now. Like I said in the previous video, this is you with one year's experience and this is the trader with 10 years experience. You want what this person has here and you want this now. You want it this second. When life does not work that way, you have to understand that there is a reason why very few people survive this game. And really, I do believe the majority of the time is that yeah, they didn't put enough time in, but they didn't give trading enough time. They didn't spend enough time at it. And they saw their failures as literally a way to measure their own self-worth. And then they felt like, okay, I'm worthless. Let me just go back and do the, the shitty job that I hate. And they just didn't give it enough time to execute on those failures and look at them as obstacles rather than, you know, oh, you know, I'm shit at this. Okay.
I guarantee you the trader that trades seven to eight million, you know, figures is still finding out problems, is still learning every single day. And that is a fact. So never, ever forget that. Um, but overall traders, I'm going to finish that up here. Um, what I want you to focus on is a simple repeatable process. Whatever you're doing, make sure it's a simple process that you can execute over and over again. Make sure your methods of trading are very, very similar in their approach. So you're able to actually collect the data and the data is quite similar for you to review and analyze in a much easier form. And overall, don't overcomplicate the process. We as humans tend to try and overcomplicate the process, especially when we don't understand things um, or if things are genuinely if they feel like they're too simple, then, you know, we, we tend to actually make it more complicated for ourselves. Okay. Um, so overall traders, please, please, please leave a like on this, um, video, subscribe, leave a comment below. If you've any questions at all, leave them in the comments cause we can make YouTube videos out of that as well. Um, and you know, tell us your comments about the video as well. If you liked it, you didn't, that's completely fine. If you agree with it, you don't, that's completely fine too. Um, but yeah, I'll be looking forward to hearing from you all and looking forward to the next video.